What's up guys, my name is Glassfoot, and welcome back to another critical review where I look at movies in a much more freeform kind of stream of consciousness style than my Glassfoot reviews as I call them, um, which are some other videos which are much more heavily scripted and that uh, typically it's right after I watch a film that I do these, uh, normally for new movies, but with the current state of insanity that the world is right now, I am doing older films. Today, we are going to be talking about Minority Report, the 2002 film that makes me question all of crime. Like all of it. Ever. Minority Report is based on the short story of the same name by Philip K. Dick. Minority Report follows John Anderton as he is com as uh, the precogs have determined that he is going to commit a murder and as he tries to figure out why the hell they said he was going to commit said murder. So, here's the thing with Minority Report. The movie came out in 2002, so it's very much shot like a movie from 2002. There's a number of, like, beautiful cinem cinematography pieces in this, like, really stunning work that looks amazing, but it is a lot more grainy than a lot of movies now, which I actually personally like. I think that gives films character. There are a number of lens flares. There are a number of like really quick edits in this. And then the color palette is very dull. Like, I don't know, it's very gray and boring almost. It's it's very odd. It's it's really hard to explain without actually like showing you. Which minimal editing, so I'm not going to. Sorry about that. But it's it's like harder to explain like it it, it just it looks odd if that, like, I, I think it looks really cool, but it also looks very odd if you start, th or at least when I started thinking about it. Um, completely beside the point. Anyway, uh, another thing is the CGI looks a bit wonky. But again, that's because the movie came out in 2002. Like, I'm very willing to give movies from that era a complete pass on not the best looking CGI, mostly because no movie from the era has the greatest looking CGI when compared to nowadays. Anyway, like I said earlier, the movie follows John Anderton, the head of pre-crime, as he tries to figure out why the precogs have determined that he is going to kill someone, what, who he has never met, he has never met this person in his entire life, and he has no intention of killing anyone. Now, this movie makes for a very, very interesting mystery because you're trying to figure out this entire time what the hell has happened, why he's basically being set up. Interestingly enough, when it does get revealed, it is a very much an oh shit moment, though it is one that can be seen coming if you are super, super familiar with, like, cliches and whatnot. But even then, it's harder to pick up on. Like, I'm very familiar. I can typically pick up a twist villain. Like, a number of Disney's uh, recent twist villains. Uh, like, the guy from Coco. Uh, in The Incredibles. Uh, those are the two most ones that I can think... Those are the two most recent ones that I can think of. Those... I could see that twist coming from a mile away. Like, just because I'm used to stories and storytelling, just being caught up in films and reviewing all that, I'm used to seeing twists like that coming and just being able to know that that's where the plot is being taken. Uh, when I first watched this movie, I didn't know that was coming at all. It very much shocked me. Of course, I watched this when I was much younger and didn't know all that much about like those kinds of tropes. But beside that, this movie is a lot of fun. The mystery aspect is very well done for a film where the entire premise is that crime has basically been eliminated because they have precogs who can determine when a crime is going to occur, what it is going to be, and can so they can dispatch people to stop it. The problem is that they are arresting people for crimes that have not been committed. People in this film are getting arrested for crimes they were going to commit. The thing is, you can get false positives. The future is never 100% certain. 
this gets proved with John at one point in the film when he basically comes to the point where it is determined that he will commit this crime and he doesn't. He just refuses to kill. Which, first of all, amazing twist. Second, I would have totally understand if he had killed that motherfucker. That dude would have fucking deserved it with the information John knew at the time. Um, but, uh, information revealed like immediately afterward would have made me feel slightly worse if he had been killed at that moment. Completely beside the point. What I love most about this movie are the questions that it inevitably asks with the premise. Is it okay to arrest people for crimes that they have not yet committed and pretty much you can't know if they're going to commit? Yes, most of the time when the pre-crime division would get to the crime and stop it, they would be stopping it pretty much right as it happened, or at least that's the scenario that basically makes it seem with the very first crime that we see in the film. The thing is, we at one point learn that there is something known as a minority report. What a minority report is, is when two of the precogs see one version of events, and the third one sees another. These minority reports are deleted and destroyed because you can't have faith in the system if there's fallible and plausible deniability. So the reports were often destroyed. The creator, however, built a backup into the system where the memories got stored in the strongest of the precogs, the one who always had the off vision, which is, it's very interesting. I think the thing is though that what I like about the world is the technology. Uh, this is a really interesting computer where they can like take the video, enlarge it, reduce it, and they can like fast forward and reverse it. And I'm specifically doing these hand motions because that is exactly what they do in the movie. It's really, really funny to like watch because you're thinking because Tom Cruise basically had to sit there and do this. Like, I don't know how many takes he would have had to do to get that the way they wanted it, but it's really funny to me thinking of him just doing this for like five takes. <laughs> but, anyway, honestly, the most intriguing part about the film are the questions that are asked. Is it okay to arrest someone before they have committed a crime? And I plan on doing a video on this topic where I talk more about the questions posed in this um, at a later date. I don't know when I'm going to do that. My cat has been a nuisance this entire time. So now she gets to sit with me while I record. But yeah, so I plan on doing another video on that at some point in the future. I uh, don't know when. This is a kind of last minute video that I'm filming at 4 a.m. 5 a.m. Yeah, no, this is just, Minority Report's just a lot of fun. It's a and greatly enjoyable film, great acting, Tom Cruise does a good job as always, uh, the actress who plays Agatha, whose name I can't remember, she does good, uh, the villain's good, pretty much everyone in this is good. Uh, if you don't like movies from the early 2000s, which I can understand completely, um, then you're probably not going to enjoy this, because this is a very early 2000s film, but if you like a lot of sci-fi with questions like that, you'll probably enjoy it. Uh, very much like I did. Yeah, that's kind of all I have to say. If you enjoy sci-fi, you'll probably enjoy this. For me, I'd say this movie rolls a 16. It's really enjoyable. It's a lot of fun, especially if you're like me and you like watching films that kind of ask questions like this. Again, from the early 2000s, very understandable if you don't like a movie from that era. But if you are okay with watching an older movie like that and want to give this one a go, I'd say go and do it. It's on Netflix right now. And give it a watch and enjoy a fun ride with kind of existential questions. Hey guys, I hope that you enjoyed the video. Um, yeah, I know that videos are being weird right now um, with the whole pandemic thing going on. I'm trying to keep them out in a consistent pace, or I'm trying to get videos out in a consistent pace. Uh, keep them going just on a regular um, to keep myself sane, uh, but yeah, if you would like to see the video that I mentioned earlier about the minority report, 
uh, kind of the questions that it asks and kind of trying to answer some of those, you can go ahead and click right here. If it's there, which it potentially isn't because I haven't filmed it yet or uploaded yet. If you'd like to see more videos like this, talking where I kind of review movies, what I call the critical reviews, I'll leave the playlist linked right there. And that's all I have for now, guys. I hope that you guys have a great day. And as always, peace out, friends.